for the introduction. And it's such an honor to be here to make a presentation at Alibaba Cloud Developer Summit 2023. And thanks for having me. So today we're going to talk about applying cloud native architecture to edge with open world. So here is the agenda, starting with about the background, what's behind all these activities, and also what's in it for us. And uh, based on our POC evaluation, uh, we're going to share the experiences and uh, you know, like evaluation result that we have. And a quick introduction by myself is I'm Tomoya, and I am currently uh, based in US, the Bay Area, but I am originally posted in uh, Tokyo. And I am a software engineer, so please don't ask me anything about the management because I don't have the answer for that. And most likely working on uh, OSS project, open source project, and system services, and the proprietary uh, system software. So I have been working with the open source project uh, ROS that stands for Robot Operating System. And I am also the member of the TSC to make a lot of contribution and also the core maintainer for that framework. So here is the some information about my colleagues that I think it's gonna be easier to make contact with uh, using WeChat. So if you are interested, please uh, reach out to them. So let me explain about, uh, quickly about uh, Sony R&D Center. So we have uh, several offices all over the world, uh, Europe, India, and the Pacific, uh, China and including Tokyo HQ and also the US barrier. That's where I belong to The Sony R&D Center does many technologies that are described here, uh, you know, like starting like audiovisual and AI the machine learning recently and human interaction and device sensor materials so where I belong to is like a system architecture and the robotics on this slide. So our target is to provide the basic technology or platform for the business units in Sony so that they can build the application on top of it. That's uh, kind of basic how it works in Sony. Okay, so the background. So uh, what's behind all these activities? So as you already know, like edge devices getting much worse and much worse, and things getting more complicated, and it's distributed and connected to devices. So it's easy to, to like imagine about this, because we already have the use cases like a robotics application to interact with human, uh, you know, like interact with us, or autonomous driving. So things getting more complicated, and I want to mention it has to be more application developer uh, friendly. So once it comes to the edge IoT environment, uh, we have to integrate our application that every single time the platform changes. If you have the specific platform A, you have to integrate your application even if your application functionality is almost the same. This happens every single time. So we don't like to do that. I think nobody does. So I think the more flexible or platform agnostic application lifecycle is required. So uh, what's the goal? What, what are we are going for? So we need to be able to support more collaborative. Uh, for example, like a multiple robot working together with high, highly task to complete and distributed system and application. And also, the data pipeline uh, constructed on the application should be able to be dynamically adjusted, scaled, and reconfigured during runtime. And it's not static anymore. And uh, besides, uh, once it comes edge IoT, it has to be cost effective and performance effect effective for sustainability. So as you can imagine, as current cloud infrastructure, most of them are supported uh, if uh, you consider these requirements for the cloud infrastructure. But uh, you know, the situation is different between cloud and edge. So if the idea is to bring the idea, you know, like the architecture from the cloud native to edge IoT environment, that would be really helpful because we can manage the entire fleet, including edge IoT devices as a single cluster system. So and there are uh, actually many missing use cases 
So that it is kind of like a different situation. So for example, like a network can be fragile, probably disconnected sometimes, and things break down and probably never be back online. So we need to address these issues and requirements uh, once it comes to the HIoT environment. So this is a really abstractive diagram, but I think it's really common to have this kind of like application for intelligent process, uh, if you think about like audio agent or robotics or autonomous driving. And they, in this uh, slide, data comes from the real or virtual environment you know, like we, we're gonna get the sensing data and based on that data, we're gonna do the recognition or perception or modeling for our application. And after the intelligent process, which depends on your application and data comes back down, probably navigation or path planning or rendering and actually, you know, that controls the actuators to give the physical feedback for the end user. So this is actually how it works, the modern application. And since I mentioned about the flexible platform, uh, something we want to have as a flexibility is described on the right. So the use case A shows that the most of the process will be completed in the cloud infrastructure. So probably for each device is just to interact with the end user, just like a smartphone use case, you would say. This is use case A. And use case B, okay, we have more resources for the edge infrastructure. We want to take advantage of that. So in this particular case, uh, most of the tasks will be processed in edge infrastructure. For example, edge servers or edge devices. And only access to the cloud to, you know, like uh, access the user data or user preferences, something like that. So for doing visibility, we currently use OpenYort. Uh, to be, to be the, like a device bridge. And Open Yurt uh, just works out of the box, the most of our use cases. And such as uh, data plane tunneling beyond the network. Uh, network by here is internet. So that you can you know, add your edge devices over the internet to the cluster system. And it provides the interoperability with Kubernetes. I think this is the strong point to keep the compatibility with, with Kubernetes because it does not break the API. So if it is not transparent and proxied in any ways to bridge the API, that means it breaks the API, probably some components from Kubernetes or container network interfaces cannot work because it depends on the Kubelet or Kubernetes API sometimes. And OpenYurt also supports ECO service mesh and this has been confirmed with the POC environment. And OpenYurt is one of the CNCF project, and uh, we see that open source activity is pretty good. So that is the main reason that we chose to go with OpenYurt to see if our idea works okay. okay here is the POC overview. Uh, it's not well described. But application uses a camera and the streaming devices, <coughs> excuse me, provide a live streaming for the end user. And we have several edge devices that can run containers, of course, and connect those edge devices to open your components running in the cloud infrastructure. And it's likely that we have the Kubernetes generic node, which you know, like is easy to imagine because we already have the Kubernetes cluster in the running in the cloud infrastructure. So it should be aligned with OpenYort. And the control plane with uh, the OpenYort boxes that is connected via OpenYort tunneling so that we can have the entire fridge control, including edge IoT devices, which, which by the way, the cameras, uh, some displays or something like that. And tunneling is only required uh, for edge IoT devices in this, in this case. Uh, since OpenYort, the manage is that if the communication requires the tunneling or not, based on the IP addresses or network topology. So as I mentioned, uh, edge devices and the application fleet are not statically configured anymore. That means with the PLC environment, if you add or remove or any devices in the edge, it's, it will be detected by the cluster system based on, on your hardware capability or you know, like a labeling or something, the cluster, it automatically deploys the application 
application based on that information. So it's going to be like a more like circulatory functioning system we have here as PLC. And so far, uh, feedback uh, using Open Yard uh, just provides us the out of the bo out of the box experience to extend the cloud native to edge IoT devices, and using CNI such as like Cilium, Weave, Flannel that we have checked, and just they just work uh, without any problems. And we also verified the service mesh for the Istio uh, work with, work fine with Open Yard, and since our Final scope is not only for the container orchestration. We want to manage entire service mesh for our uh, entire fleet. So that's the requirement also. And currently, we just made sure to use Istio works with uh, no problem, uh, you know, uh, with Open Yard. But probably that is not deep enough because uh, something we want to for the next step is we want to configure security policies using Istio. Okay, the challenge is so far so good. So the open yard uh, for our use cases, but it's, uh, it's like uh, nothing is perfect. So what's missing? So the first priority I want to point out here is uh, edge optimization. I think it's always about like a trading off. How much can you pay for the system space, right? So, but as far as we can see from our experience, we pay too much for the tax. So uh, we do need to optimize the footprint and uh, is, uh, CPU consumption. And I think especially for uh, like a communication cost, uh, to thinking about ARM platform for edge, because the edge devices are resource constrained environment. That's something we have to deal. And currently, uh, during the installation, the open yield requires to disable like a Kubernetes, one of the uh, feature uh, that is called a node life cycle. So I think this should be avoided. I think one of the key points uh, for the open yard is go align with the Kubernetes API. So this uh, constraint should be avoided also. And finally, like device abstraction. This is not only for, only for open yard, but also Kubernetes, uh, more like uh, container device interfaces that we are working on. We already have issued a KEP, Kubernetes enhancement proposal about this. So as I mentioned, that like once it comes to the edge IoT devices, we have like specific hardwares and complicated devices. Probably you have the proprietary sensors or something like that. So it should be more flexible to add user callbacks or flexible interfaces to implement. So that's I think the mandatory to abstract the device to the container runtime. Okay, that is pretty much all my presentation. So in final slide, let me introduce uh, the Kubernetes Edge IoT Working Group. I am the member of that. So we are working together to squeeze out the problems or use cases that I mentioned pretty much in these slides together. So uh, recently, we have uh, released the paper called Edge Native Application Principle. Uh, I think that was uh, took place at the Kubecon uh, last year. And uh, I think this activity can be aligned with open your activity as well. And the perspective is almost the same. So if you are interested, please uh, join us and reach out to us. That is all my presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Tomoe Fujita. Next, let's welcome Mr. Alberto Rory.